You might notice I sound different. I blow up my microphone, specifically my mixer. That is a pricey piece of equipment. I've sorted it out, but potentially the next couple of videos are going to sound like this. I apologize. I had a different microphone I tried to use and that sounded like a McDonald's drive through I wasn't dealing with that. Now I could have waited, but I really wanted to talk about the Yuta Gojo situation currently because it's very interesting. I'm very excited. I'm curious and the community is kind of banding together in this really interesting way. Do we like the situation? Do we hate the situation? Are we curious? Are we cautious? What do we even think? How do we approach this? With the newest chapter that came out this week, we got a pretty big reveal. The return of Gojo, but not in the way that people think. Yuta has taken Kenjaku's ability to swap his brain out and put it into Gojo's body. This allows him to use Gojo's abilities and potentially everything else at a much higher level. This is a very drastic situation. It's disgusting, it's horrifying. Honestly, the more you think about it, the more desperate it becomes. And I think that's kind of fair. I think it's to be expected. This is a desperate situation. This is a weird, murky, last resort, last chance type beat. And can you really blame him? Can you blame Yuta? Can you blame everyone else for being skeptical, cautious, weird about this whole thing? No one wanted it to happen. No one expected it to happen. But when you're versing someone like Sukuna, everything just goes out the window. All the plans that you had in motion, all the ideas and things that you could actually do and achieve get thrown out rather quickly. And we're reaching a point where something being utilized this way, this aggressively, this horrifically is kind of like a last resort to really push Sukuna past the limit. If Yuta cannot kill Sukuna here, if he dies within the five minute time length that we've been given, someone else will do it and it will be because of this last chance and also everyone that has built up to it so far. To me, this is a culmination of everyone's efforts and everyone's sacrifices, but Yuta's being one of the most drastic. To talk about it kind of in detail, we have to mention just briefly the timeline of how things got here. Firstly, Gojo and Sukuna. This fight, very important, very massive, a big opener. And there's a reason why they sent out Gojo first is because not only does he have to kind of test the waters where Sukuna sits, how powerful he actually is, but it's the highest chance to get him at the weakest state or potentially even kill him. So sending out Gojo was the best idea, the best chance that they had. And the only reason that they're able to fight Sukuna is because he's a lot more exhausted than what he originally was because of Gojo. We know how that fight ended and it revealed to us a lot of things. Since then, a lot of people have rotated in and out of this fight. It's to be expected, but every little bit and piece that a person has struggled to fight against and Sukuna has done partially something. Exposed an ability, exhausted some of his cursed energy, taken an arm or done a little bit of damage or this or that. All of it is slowly building up. So the hard work, effort and even sacrifice that Gojo has gone through opening up the floodgates has allowed everyone else to slowly, continuously, relentlessly push things forward. With the rotation of all of these different people, all of these different abilities, we've seen so many people come in and out of the story, either be on purpose where they leave on their own or they get killed or heavily injured. The point is, is that they are sacrificing something being here. The people that are staying, the people that are coming back, the people that are fighting to death are sacrificing their own agency and their own life to take out Sukuna. The people that aren't built for that, that aren't ready for it, that aren't prepared for it or respectfully want something else have made their own choices to leave. These people right here are the final stand, the final vanguard between Sukuna and the rest of the world. If everyone falls here. No one will be able to stop him. There has been one consistent thing throughout this entire fight so far. Yuji. And seeing Yuji struggle, strive, evolve, really just do his best is honestly one of the most entertaining and saddest things to witness. For someone that's considered the weakest, technically, doesn't have a ton of cursed energy or doesn't have all of these abilities, doesn't have a domain expansion or a simple domain or anything, just blessed by black flashes, he was one of the lowest contenders to do anything. How would Yuji compete with Sukuna, how would he keep up with everyone else? And yet the prep time, the idea, the bits and pieces that he's gone up against Sukuna has allowed him to awaken. His abilities have fleshed out more. His abilities have grown into something 
vital to defeating Sukuna now, chipping away at him bit by bit, not allowing him to heal his own cursed energy. What was once just a thorn in Sukuna's side is now becoming his foil. With that, you get a bit of a reveal as well in terms of their relationship and how they're actually connected and where Yuji comes from, which very fascinating. I like that. But now we get to where we are with Yuta and the importance of the role that Yuta is about to play. He needs to get something done here to make it worthwhile, not only because of the sacrifice that he made to get to that point himself personally, but also utilizing the uniqueness of Gojo's body. Sukuna has mentioned this ideal before, sacrificing your own humanity. I'd imagine there is a difficulty that comes with that. Why would a human want to sacrifice their own humanity? It turns them into monsters, it turns them into beings unrecognizable. This was something that Yuta struggled with. Even with the plans and motion and all these things underneath, the idea of actually going through with it is very one way, or at least it's meant to feel that way. We don't know if Yuta can be saved after these five minutes. We don't know if he gets locked into Gojo's body or rejected. We don't know if he can survive after it, but it doesn't really matter. See, in Yuta's mind, he's already sacrificed that part of himself. He has jumped ship to maximize all of the efforts that everyone has currently gone through to push it over the final edge. And if he dies within the process, if he dies against Sukuna, if he dies after the five minutes, so be it. As long as he's able to make as much of an impact as possible so everyone remaining can finish the job. Yuta has fundamentally accepted that role, physically, mentally, emotionally. That's what it means to sacrifice yourself, to get rid of and shred your own humanity for something far greater. It's funny because it works against each other. You're being so selfish and and singular to evolve into the next step. But the purpose, the intent is to save the world, is to stop Sukuna in his tracks, to become a monster like him so the world can be saved. I think the clash of those ideals being almost identical, but the purpose or result opposites is very fascinating. Having that represented through Gojo again as a physical medium feels kind of full circle-y. Gojo himself is a different form of sacrifice, something that is connected very humanly to the world as a pillar of power, something that he's always been. So now that someone else is in his shoes to sacrifice another part of themselves, it all kind of meshes together nicely. It feels impactful, it feels weighty, it feels purposeful. I like that. I think the bigger question here, does it work? Does it stop Sukuna? Does it injure him enough? What can Yuta do that was different to Gojo before? Well, you see, Yuta has learnt quite a bit, not only within the short amount of time, which is prep, but also watching the fight of Gojo versus Sukuna. So he has seen and understood potentially what needs to be done to get the upper hand. This could be something as simple as timing, moving cursed energy around in a way that is different to what Gojo was, but is only knowledgeable because of how Gojo done it. This is not a similar experience. It is complex and it is ever growing. It will be different this time because it has to be. I see a lot of people say that this is an assassination of Gojo or Yuta's character, but I don't really see where or how because respectfully, you're still sticking true to all of the characters and their ideals. It's not assassinating or going back on anything that they stand for. If anything, Yuta is evolving past a point that we knew he always had but definitely ignored it or shied away from it because he never needed to sacrifice himself that humanity to become a calamity but when the situation has called for it he's clearly stepped up to the base and he's one of the only people that can actually do it successfully that right there is a clear example of him stepping into bigger shoes into a bigger role a bigger purpose growth development not assassination gojo is a different conversation but one that still isn't anywhere near that idea gojo played his role perfectly and even though he couldn't win, he still made it possible for everyone to be here right now. He's still being used as the person that's going to do the most damage again to Saguna. I can understand people not liking it or enjoying it or hating the idea of Gojo being used this way. I get it, but it's not an assassination. It is very far from that. I don't know how this fight comes to an end. I expect you to do massive, massive things to change the landscape and to potentially push this fight into the finale. But we have something lurking in the background, something that's problematic, and that is the merger.
We don't know enough about the merger. We don't know what it's going to give birth to. We don't know how that's going to occupy the same space as all of these sorcerers as well as Sukuna. We don't know if it's going to be complete or perfect or incomplete. We don't know. And that is the scariest thing. So while everyone can try to live after defeating Sukuna, desperately try to survive the onslaught that is about to happen, you still have that merger. And one can hope that whoever remains, whoever is standing by, can still take it down. There is a lot to be worried about, a lot to be scared of, but it comes with great character writing, great emotional moments, and with the last cherry on top, potentially the finale of the story.